Welcome back to This and That Halloween edition today. We decided we would dress up a little bit. <laughs> it's the glasses on top of the mask for me. Just Anyway, I'm Kelly. This is my dad, Scott, under all of that. Hello. And we're going to, uh, a Halloween edition, we're going to talk a little bit about scary real estate stories and other things. I'm going to take this off so that you can actually make your first picture. <laughs> we also have Halloween, uh, this or that to play at the end. So, we've got a few Halloween things today. Okay. Yeah, take the mask off. <laughs> While he's doing that, we had said a few weeks ago that our, <laughs> that our goal was to get to 100 subscribers on YouTube by the end of the month. Yes. And we are one subscriber short, okay? One, we tell you. One subscriber, okay? So, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your neighbors, tell your coworkers. Tell one them. subscriber. Yeah. Go turn. How's the hair look? <laughs> it gets so out of place, you know. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't been out of place in 40 years. <laughs> it's because you've had the same haircut for the last 40 years. Or more. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> what economic news do we have this week? Well, we have existing home sales uh, okay. data and uh, existing home sales slid by 1% in September. And it is something, I want to say like the 37th straight month that home sales have been down. So that's definitely yes. a trend. Yeah, that, that makes sense going back to late 2021. Yeah. Rates started to rise in yep. early 22. And they were down 3.5% below September of 2023. So year over year, a decline of 1%. Okay. Or 3.5%, sorry. The interesting thing, though, is in spite of that, our inventory is still below pre-pandemic levels. It feels like it's been going up and up and it's still not at the same levels. Yes. So the other interesting comparison though is months of inventory. Okay. So when we had that larger inventory in 2019, so we're looking at September, 2019, we had four months of inventory. Mm -hmm. And this is again nationally, so local numbers may vary from this. Right now, we're at 4.3 months. Interesting. So what it's saying is while the inventory is lower, so is the demand. Right. So we're in this funny area where we're, we're not oversupplied with homes, but we're also certainly not oversupplied with buyers. Right. And, and so <clears throat> prices continue to hold. Mm -hmm. Inventories are still growing, but still below pre-pandemic levels mm -hmm. and you know, quite frankly, most people felt that pre-pandemic levels were low to begin with because of a decade of right. new builders not building new homes right. at the rate that would be sustainable in, in, you know, replacement, you know, new people coming into the market plus right. replacing old homes. <clears throat> so, um, and we've explained what months of inventory is before, but in case you're not familiar with the term, it's basically if no new inventory came onto the market, how many months would it take for all of the current inventory to be gone at the rate it's currently being absorbed? Yep, exactly right. So, so if your supermarket never got a gallon of milk again, how, how many, many days, days supply? Yep, would it be until all that milk is gone? Yeah. We experienced this firsthand during the pandemic, the early days with toilet paper. Yes, and for a while uh, in this country, eggs. Yes. So with the bird flu that ravaged mm. the... Mm -hmm. Chicken population. Yes. So, so that's something we're going to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. I believe it's this week that new home sales um, will come out, so it'll be interesting to compare that. Okay. Um, and um, 
And then again, not doing unemployment, um, not only the hurricanes, but then I, in an article I read, I was reminded about the Boeing strike, which is mm -hmm. a significant, that was like 35,000 employees that went on strike. And so that's going to cause, as they go on strike, claims to go up. And they, I understood that they reached settlement this weekend. And I don't know if, oh, they didn't ratify it though, I don't think. So anyway, but when they do ratify that, they'll, all those people drop off, be off the walls, and so yeah. so it's it's jumping around for for um, outside reasons other than general economic trends. So it's noise in the data. So we're going to yeah. ignore it for a while. Makes sense. Yeah. Is that it? That is it. It <laughs> is a yeah another point economic update. And a little bit of a real estate update because it, it has to do with existing home sales. Yes, it does. All right. So on to the uh, scary real estate side of things. So I have a couple of fun facts first before we get into some stories. So um, according to a survey that Zillow did, one in 10 Americans sell their homes due to paranormal activity. And they and all those shows on the Discovery <laughs> Channel and all that were a bunch of yeah yeah they define paranormal activity as including oh <laughs> we're trying to do that I was moving mine mine never came in contact I'm fairly sure we have that video evidence one way or the other okay I was just going to try to move this over so that I can have a set of. Highly rehearsed and overproduced <laughs> is this podcast. Anyway, paranormal activity as experiences such as seeing ghosts or other supernatural beings, hearing strange noises or voices, or feeling a presence in the house. So, that was what they thought. I don't know if I... We've told you this story about the, um, the property mm. and that when we first moved in that bathroom doors would close and lock. Mm -hmm. um, and the you know, previous owners had passed away, mm -hmm. early owners had passed away in the home. And that happened quite often for about a year, year and a half. Yeah. And then it kind of stopped, but that was our, we, we, we blame the previous owners. Yes. That activity. And that's also, Another item that death in the house, as well as these potentially supernatural beings and cemeteries nearby, can all um, make it take longer to sell a home. Uh, fun fact in the state of Arizona and quite a few other states actually, um, per Arizona law, you actually do not have to disclose if someone has died in a property. If you are directly asked, you do have to be truthful. If but you know. if you know, yes. But if you are not directly asked and you know that someone died in a property, you do not have to disclose that. Yeah. It's an Arizona revised statute that you do not have to do that. And then it's not just death and paranormal activity, um, at least in the UK. A British property website, Zoopla, found that homes in the UK with 13 on the door as the address number brought in around $12,000 less than the average home price. Not that anybody's superstitious. Exactly. Another fun fact, mm -hmm. if you watch Hitchcock movies. Good evening. Do you believe in ghosts? Mm -hmm. And there is a, a hotel room number or a house street number or something like that. If you add up the individual numbers, they nearly always add up to 13. Interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was one of the things, one of his little Easter eggs that he would sneak into his films. Okay. So it'd be like room... 337. 337. Okay. Interesting. So on to the scary stories from <clears throat> real estate agents. So the National Association of Realtors um, magazine put out a call for stories from agents. Okay. 
So here are a few of the ones that I found interesting um, coming from agents across the country. I'm personally a little surprised that when we sold the house with the basement here in Tucson that we didn't come across anything. No, but everybody thought it'd be a great speakeasy. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> a lot more on the fun side than the <laughs> yeah. spooky side, but that's where a lot of our fellow realtors' minds went. Yes. <laughs> So this one from Barry Long out of Washington. I always make a habit of knocking or ringing the doorbell even if the house is vacant. For the record, we do this also. We also yell as we enter. So if you ever go look at houses with us, be prepared. My clients and I were standing on the porch as I rang the doorbell of a vacant house and we all distinctly heard, who is it, in a gruff little old lady's voice. We all looked at each other. I asked if they heard it and they nodded their heads up and down. We went in and checked out the house and all the closets, but found no one. We didn't make an offer, needless to say. This one from Julie Beltran uh, of California. Years ago, I had a listing that the seller said was haunted by a young boy. I see dead people. When my article came out in the newspaper for ad for advertisement of the new listing, there is a young, dark figure of a boy standing in the doorway in the picture. Oh, goosebumps. Yeah, I imagine that would be um, an interesting one to pick up off the <laughs> rack and be like, that doesn't look quite right. <laughs> um, this one is from Beth Baldwin of Virginia. I was showing a home built in the 1800s. You're gonna like this one. The kitchen was actually located in the basement. When I went to get the lockbox key, my client told me that the door to the basement slash kitchen was unlocked, so we went ahead and went in that way. We pulled the door closed behind us, but didn't touch any locking mechanisms. We proceeded to preview the home. We decided to exit the same way we came in, but when we went to open the door, it was locked. That creeped us all out, so we ran upstairs and fortunately were able to get out of the back door. So there's your door locking. And then last one, Carolyn Blankfort from New York. I showed a house once and the only things in the house were two boxes in a bedroom closet, each box containing the ashes of the owners. Okay. <laughs> so, we don't have any personal good um, Halloween creepy stories yet. I mean, I have walked into a house that was supposed to be empty that wasn't, but yeah. not, not to this level of no, and you know, if we never <laughs> are able to contribute to that annual article, I'm fine with it. You don't want to be a part of that? No, no, no. You know, there's even more about people finding, like, bodies and, yeah, stuff. But I, I skipped those ones, so yeah. There's, there's some interesting stuff if you are into this sort of thing. Um, pretty easy Google search in the National Associ oh, Association yeah. of Realtors. Cool. So, transitioning from real estate to our sort of week in recap. Yes. I wanted to mention that this week we had our Lawn Cares event, mm -hmm. uh, which is the nonprofit that long agents um, started. Yeah, and donate to basically. And we had basically a raffle and all of this. And through that, uh, raised over $51,000 for the Lawn Cares Foundation. Uh, company-wide and the Lawn Cares Foundation works exclusively in Arizona. Um, the charter doesn't allow the money to go outside. outside. So it's yep. all in the community here. Yep, yes. all stays in the community. Um, so that was that was a successful event I think. Yeah. The main, there's two main ways that they raise money and one of them is this big event where lots and lots of raffle tickets are sold and yes. You know, uh, businesses in the community donate prizes and whatnot. Yep. Um, so there's that. That's a big fundraiser. And then uh, agents voluntarily donate a, a portion of their proceeds uh, from every sale that they make uh, to the Long Cares Foundation. And then uh, a letter is sent to um, mm -hmm. whoever worked with that agent, letting them know that a portion of the commission mm -hmm. went went to Long Cares. Exactly. That's a lot of fun. 
It is. It's a good event every year. Uh, other things this week. It's a good time to be a motorsport fan right now. Yeah, it was. Uh, there was no shortage of entertaining racing this weekend uh, between the NASCAR Cup Series mm -hmm. and the Formula One race. Where you know, if we want to start Formula One, sure. The stewards dropped the hammer on <laughs> Max Verstappen this weekend. Yes, second week in a row, and conversation goes straight to penalties and overtaking. The calls that sort of lack thereof. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The calls that the FIA is making. Yeah, and after the the Austin race, there was a discussion between the stewards and the drivers and the team principals about enforcement, and they kind of landed on some guidelines without changing the, the wordings of the rules, and um, Max decided to test those new guidelines. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> as one of the uh, team principals, or actually one of the drivers, I think it was George Russell, said 19 drivers got it and one didn't. Um, and so Max uh, did a similar move just to wait in Austin and drove hard into the apex with no intention of making turn four. Mm -hmm. Once again, it was Lando Norris on the outside, mm -hmm. uh, pushed Lando through the grass and, uh, you know, it was a sharp turn. So they was able to get back onto the track. Uh, so the FIA decided to give him a 10 second penalty for that. Mm -hmm. Four turns later, same lap, same lap. Max makes another mm -hmm. lunge and drives himself and Lando well off the track mm -hmm. and well out of reach of the Ferraris who were running off with the lead. And, you know, Max, he got another 10 second penalty for mm -hmm. that, but Max accomplished what he was hoping to do. And that was, you know, basically make sure Lando didn't win the race. And yeah. Mission accomplished and Carlos Sainz just drove a great race mm -hmm. and he was fast all weekend. So, yeah, he was. You know, there's no assumption that Lando was going to get by him, but really hurt his chances. Yeah, Max made sure it wasn't going to, yeah. yeah. I feel like the first 10-second penalty was maybe a little harsh. I would have been fine with that one being a five-second penalty. Right. Um, I feel like it wasn't that different than the five-second penalties we were seeing in Austin for a similar move. The second one, I completely agree. Yeah. That to me feels like the soccer equivalent of never even trying to play the ball, right. just going to take the player out. That was all Max was doing in my mind on that second one. Yeah. I think maybe it was a 10 second penalty because it was like, hey, we just talked about this, you know? And so you weren't listening, obviously. So yeah. here's 10 seconds. Now, if you do one 10 second and then four turns later, you see what happens next. You know, there's some people that are thinking, well, that might have been a drive through penalty. Yeah. Then another 10 second penalty. Yeah. To me, that second one was way worse than the first yes. one. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it will be interesting as we go to Brazil, which has um, opportunities for overtaking. Mm -hmm. um, I really like that track. Yes, a number of dive bomb opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. So who knows what we're going to see this week in San Pablo. San pa uh, Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. Thank you. It's it's Portuguese. Yes. I also wonder if Verstappen is going to end up with any points on his license for that second one. Because I feel like Magnussen did less bad things earlier this season and ended up with points on his license and obviously then had to take a race off when he got suspended um and so if verstappen doesn't get any for that challenge i feel like well and i i looked earlier today and i didn't find anything that said that and, and usually that happens the same day yeah um but i i, I agree completely magnuson got points on his license for far less egregious moves. Uh, yeah. So I I am surprised I haven't seen anything. Maybe we just missed it. Yeah. Or it's coming out right now. <laughs> yes. Uh, as usual, <laughs> that's the type of thing that happens. Yeah. Yeah. I just found that kind of interesting that 
I wasn't even seeing conversation about it, and I expected to at least see some sort of conversation about that. Right. I think he's low enough on points right now that it's really not going to make a difference. But no, it's not. But you, that's an, again, you want to come back to consistency, you right? Want consistency from the FIA on how they handle these things, right? And you know, a lot of people felt that Magnuson shouldn't got any points for when he did get the points that tripped the the ban, right? Um, you know, the driver that was offended by the that K Mag's action said, "Yeah, that shouldn't have been a point penalty," right? So. So there's that. Uh, the other thing is, you know, you have back-to-back races now where Ferrari has been dominant. Yep, my next note was Ferrari climbing. Yes, <laughs> and again, no upgrades. Mm-hmm. So their focus on let's get what we can out of the car mm-hmm. uh, may be paying off. Do we think they can overtake McLaren? In the well, of constructors if mclaren keeps on stubbing their toe i mean oscar piastri had a terrible qualification right uh and so didn't get near the points that he probably should have and that's happened now two weeks in a row mm-hmm. um you know they keep on stubbing their toe and, for our- and max might just keep taking lando out so yeah and so there is i don't know if they they're going to catch mclaren they'll well it's going to be tight. They're like 40 points back, 40 points back, something like that right now. I mean, it's the same amount that Haas is now behind um, Aston Martin. Yeah, except we're talking about getting, you know, weekends of 44 points Those versus points. weekends of getting eight points. That's true. That's true. Well, you know, yeah, I think it's possible. It's definitely possible. That would be quite the statement, I feel like, for signs to go out on, yes. being part of a team that, wins the constructors especially if charles only ends up third yes in the driver's standings to then have one of the constructors championship yeah with your best driver being third yeah absolutely absolutely so it's entertaining uh mm-hmm. i think next year is just going to be fantastic mm-hmm. because you know again teams at the top are extracting all they can out of the regulations teams in the middle are catching up and Mm -hmm. so it's much the middle is so competitive now well Mm -hmm. the the top is competitive but the middle is super competitive too and so for the last and maybe aston will get their act together with newey (laughs) there's a very good chance that that will happen it's interesting the last two broadcasts you've barely seen the leader yeah because they've kind of checked out and all the action is mid-pack and it has been non-stop action sometimes you know some of these races especially mexico mm-hmm. uh can be a little snooze fest but uh not this weekend the competition is thick and heavy now yeah yeah my final note on f1 was the um team picture photo bombs yes from both uh mclaren and ferrari yes and i thought that was a fun little uh joining in on both sides that, you know, everyone's a Ferrari fan and science has been a McLaren driver. And so, yep. Yep. So that was a, a cute one. We'll see how long it lasts. If it ends up being that those four drivers are seriously all fighting each other here coming up, but yeah. Well, the other interesting thing is, is Mercedes took heavy damage in both cars at Coda. Mm-hmm. Um, George Russell, destroyed another car in practice Mm -hmm. this weekend. And Total Wolf indicated in the team principal that they're very much in danger of broaching the uh, expenditure cap. Mm -hmm. And that comes with it some pretty heavy penalties, including uh, wind tunnel time, which is very, Mm -hmm. very precious. And as one of the top teams, they they already get less wind tunnel time than the teams lower on the right. standings so yeah it could be interesting times for uh mercedes yes they need clean races coming up yep. nascar so many playoff drivers in the top five or ten consistently yes it was playoff drivers fighting for every mm-hmm. position at the top of the grid in each stage and, mm-hmm. and at the end. 
and you just have to hand it to Tyler Reddick. He drove that car so deep into turn three on the last lap. Mm -hmm. And I was fully expecting him to go up in the wall. That's how hard and deep he drove it into the corner and he made it work. And he was six tenths of a second faster on that lap than the next closest. Right, which was Ryan Blaney who had the lead yeah. starting the lap and ran the second best lap of all the contenders and got smoked. Yeah. And and you know, he was a little dumbfounded. And quite frankly, you know, again, I was like my eyes got big when I saw <laughs> trying to try to drive into turn three. It was like, whoa. And I think he just like, uh, the only way I'm going to get in is get the win and this is either going to stick or it's not. And finishing second won't do me any good. Right. So boom, he went and won the thing. Close to the uh, Ross Chastain Martinsville ride the wall. Yes, which has been outlawed. Yes, but it was... <laughs> it was on that thing, like... Whoa. This is going to work or not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was fun to see Michael Jordan there, who's been at so many races this year. Yes. He has become a real uh, race fan as you know, co-owner of, of Tyler Reddick's team. And mm-hmm. so... Um, yep, 2311. Yeah, he's, he was loving every moment of that. Yeah, this has to... Yeah, he probably was in search of something to rekindle those competitive fires, mm-hmm. you know, and, and now he gets to do that through through NASCAR. Yeah. It was a very entertaining race. Uh, love Homestead as a track mm-hmm. with three and four different grooves that can all work. And you saw teams and drivers use all of them to try to get around mm-hmm. cars on the track. Just makes for fun racing to watch yep and once again points are close going into final race of the round in martinsville next weekend and two of the spots are already locked with two race winners out of the first two in this round so denning hamlin has always been good at martinsville ryan blaney last year got into the Mm -hmm. final by winning at martinsville so it's going to be interesting to see them run their races it's a tough track lots of rubbing and bumping and scraping mm-hmm. and what and it's 500 laps kyle larson is below the cut line for the first time in the playoffs yeah he had a tough day but boy he drove his tail off after he mm-hmm. cut a tire and and uh went to the back of the field he ended up running well, he faded at the end. Oh, well, that's because he spun. Yeah, he spun. He got a little over aggressive, but he had been competing for the the win mm-hmm. uh, right before that. I don't think Reddick would have gotten that win if he hadn't spun. Well, and I don't. I think actually Danny Hamlin might have won the race had there been no caution, because he was the fastest car towards the end. Yeah, his way on long runs. Game. Yeah, he was very good on long runs, and he. Um, that caution didn't help him. No. It Tyler Reddick had gone very long mm-hmm. in hopes of a caution. It didn't come out until two laps after he, he stopped. Stopped, but it still worked out for him because he was able to stay out, keep track of position. Only had a cap, couple laps on his tires. Right. And after five laps into the restart, all the tires had equalized between the teams, and so yeah, he just needed to hold on for those first few laps and he did so yeah yeah so well worth going back and watching if he didn't have an opportunity at least the extended highlights because it was yeah entertaining it's a good race yeah so f1's at brazil next weekend nascar is at martinsville (laughs) it should be another good weekend it should be another good weekend and the following weekend we're going to be up in phoenix Phoenix and f1 is off so we don't miss anything right well we'll be at the racetrack in person yes very excited finally yes (laughs) yes so and again we've we've talked about this before all three races that weekend are fun to watch yeah they're all for the championship yeah they're all for the championship and boy nobody leaves anything on the table and I think especially the truck series, sometimes they're a little aggressive. 
Sometimes. <laughs> and it makes things interesting. You know, they're aggressive all year <laughs> long, and they just they just turn it up to 11 <laughs> on, on championship weekend, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, it's pro- again, I've said this, it's probably my favorite race of the weekend. Yeah, at least last year, I think it was the best race. Yeah, absolutely. So. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So we'll be back next week recapping everything that happened. Now watch them all be. Oh, uh, for. For Martinsville. And, and Brazil. Brazil. Hopefully they're not boring races. That would be really anticlimactic after we built them all up. <laughs> yeah. And they're actually both on at reasonable times. So if you actually want to watch them, you don't have to get up at 6 a.m. to watch. Unless you're in. Okay. Yeah. Well, they get the nice times the rest of the year. <laughs> this is our little stretch of the season yeah, where. Actually, it's not that bad for them. It's just, you know, late evening time for them. Yeah. In the UK. Let's see. They're, what, like eight hours ahead of us right now? So that would be. A six o'clock race for Brazil because it's 10 our time. So, okay. So, yeah. yeah, it's not bad. It's good time for them yeah. as well as us. Mm. Although it's cutting into our National Football League time. Seriously. Yes. It's shorter than the three and a half hour long football games. So, True. do you have anything else on sports? Yeah. You know, I, I, um, did I? No. Nope. Yeah, I didn't watch very much else this week. We talked about last week that it was going to be a busy week, and it was, so. Yeah, it was. I I saw my two races, and that was about it. So for Halloween, our little this or that. I've got a few of them here. Okay. Halloween party or trick-or-treating? As an adult, Halloween party. Okay. As a child, definitely (laughs) trick-or-treating. Yeah, I think I'd go Halloween party too. We don't really have kids come around to be able to hand out trick or treating to, so. Well, you live in the hinterlands. Um, <laughs> well, let's just say the houses are a little further, further apart. apart. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, that's not a great uh, walking tour. And no. I live in a gated community. And so, you know. With a bunch of people who are 55 plus years old and can't have kids under 19 here. It's a leisure community for active seniors. I don't. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, everybody that would want to church or treat here has to drive in here and then give it, you know, who, who are you visiting? Oh, nobody. Well, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trick or treating here. Yeah. I'm actually surprised that they don't do like a, a trunk or treat here. I feel like. All the old people would like the little kids coming through with their costumes at an appropriate time and not bothering them. So I think I saw, a, and I could be confusing this with long. Okay. But I thought I saw a, a, a item earlier this week that they're having something in Marana where everybody can go and bring their trick-or-treat stuff. And so... Yeah, I think Marana is doing one. Yes, and so if, if you want to still get involved us old people, we, we can go down there and hand out um, treats. Candy? Candy, yes. Okay. Yeah. Hay rides or corn maze? Five minutes later. Well, I'm just thinking how with hay fever anymore, <laughs> the hay rides aren't fun. So <laughs> probably, probably a corn maze. But neither one of them really sounds all that appealing to me right now. No. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'd go with the hayride. I figured that. It involves <laughs> horses more than likely, unless you have an ox out there pulling the wagon. Or a tractor, but that's fine too. Well, that's true, yes. Back home, we used to often have tractor pulled hayrides. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And clearly, I am not allergic to hay, so. I used to not be. Yeah. Okay. Uh, apple cider or pumpkin spice latte? Apple cider. Yeah, same. I know that's anti-millennial generation for me to say, but... I was actually surprised. <laughs> but yeah, no, I would I would say apple cider over pumpkin okay. spice latte also. I like pumpkin spice in, like, small doses. So I'll get, like, one a season. Okay. Right now I do have some pumpkin spice creamer. Okay. But 
Well, I've already seen the the uh, uh, peppermint creamers on on the shelves. So it's like, let's just let's just slow it <laughs> get down. through one holiday. Get through Halloween <laughs> before we go full on Christmas. I mean, we're only a few days out, so yeah, this was like a week ago. <laughs> Are you being grumpy about Christmas starting too soon? Yeah, although I am looking forward to getting my Christmas tree up again. So mm. yeah. That will be in our videos coming up because it sits right in that corner right yes, there. It does. Yes, it does. <laughs> we might have to really push it back to give enough room for you to sit. What are you saying? <laughs> Would you rather find a witch's broom or a witch's spell book? Oh, the spell book. Okay. I mean, the broom would be cool, don't get me wrong, but it's single f function, mm -hmm. you know. Whereas a spell book, you could have a whole variety of things you could do with a witch's spell book. And that, there is all kinds of mischief you can get into with that. This is one of those moments where I'm like, oh gosh, we are the same person sometimes. Because that is exactly my answer for the exact same reason. The exact same thought process on how I ended up there of, yep. Give me the spell book for all the things you can do with it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Apple didn't fall far from the tree. Uh, speaking of apples falling, oh. carve a pumpkin or dunk for apples? Car for, carve a pumpkin. <laughs> you don't want to go dunking? No, nah, the water up the nose, the <laughs> spraying you and sharing of germs. You know. Gotta breathe out your nose while you dunk. No, it, it just none of that is appealing to me at all. Uh, and you know, especially back in the day when we were up in colder weather, you know, now your hair's wet and it's forty degrees. Yeah, outside. all the hair that you've got there. Uh -huh. hey, hey. <laughs> so no, I'd much rather carve a pumpkin and deal with the uh, pumpkin guts and all that. Carve or paint a pumpkin. Carve. Okay. Yeah. I would probably also go with carve a pumpkin, but. Dunking for apples with the horses is fun. Oh, that's true. We did that up in Oregon um, a couple times, I think, for Halloween parties. And it's always interesting to see which horses, what strategies they use and, and kind of figure out. Because some of them will do the full on stick your head all the way in, go push it down to the bottom, grab it and pull it out. And then others are like, I can't get my nose wet. <laughs> Let me try to bite it as it's floating and moving. I wonder what kind of psychological profile somebody could develop <laughs> by by looking at horses that just like I don't care, dive their head into the the tub and push the apple to the bottom versus the ooh, 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 ooh. yeah yeah I don't know. Uh, the other thing though to to note, uh, we can't have carved pumpkins here yeah. and it's not because there's a rule against it or that you know the neighbors will complain well the neighbors actually will rejoice and those neighbors would be the javelina <laughs> because they will eat your pumpkin mm -hmm. your jack-o-lantern if you leave them outside and i always love it every year at this time of the year there are posts on next door Mm -hmm. Where people are like, I can't believe that these kids came and destroyed our jack o' lantern. And then you have 40 responses like, no, that was a javelina. <laughs> yeah. And they appreciate your offering. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I guess if you carve, put it somewhere high. Somewhere high or in the house. Yes. With temps as they are right now, I'm going to say in the house because if the javelina don't get to them right now, they're going to melt in the heat. Yes. Although it's supposed to cool off in a couple of days, but we've heard yes. that before. We'll see if it does. Actually down towards normal temperatures in the mid-70s. Yeah. Yeah. That's still kind of warm for pumpkins, I feel like. Well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's better. Uh, funny costumes or scary costumes? Mm. As we're wearing. <laughs> yeah. Grim Reaper's cut off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I I appreciate funny costumes, but I have always gone with the dark, mm -hmm. scary costumes. The best one from when I was little was the mask that he had that 
drained red food coloring through it and the yes and so the gloves and the face would yeah yeah have blood run through it when you push the button that was a good one yeah yeah i kind of concur on this i feel like i also appreciate funny costumes but i feel like they're hard to do well and you can miss big time yeah. on going with funny if people don't get it or you don't execute it right. I feel like scary is a little safer and it can be fun. Yeah. Especially when you have a button to make blood drain down your face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was definitely, and people didn't know who I was because I was completely full mask and 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 you're tall and I'm tall. If you can't tell from him sitting here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. Actual size. As long as I can tell people. You were imposing in that. Yes, I, uh, I, I actually, my boss didn't know who I was, and I got onto the elevator with her, and she said I was a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. That was a good one. Okay. Uh, favorite Halloween candy. Uh, well, it comes down to two. Okay. So, Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Yep. And then... It's a strong contender. Yeah. The Heath Bar Toffee. Mm. I love me some Heath Bar. That's a strong contender, too. Yeah. Those... You know, if you put either one of those out, I'd be perfectly happy. (laughs) Yeah. My initial answer was also the Reese's, so... And then how did, last one, how do you feel about candy corn? So, uh, actually we got, uh, from one of our colleagues, uh, Mm -hmm. we all got candy corn with a happy Halloween type card Mm -hmm. from them. And yeah, a little packet of candy corn on there. And I I told Kelly, I said, you know, this reminds me of my grandmother Vera because she always Mm -hmm. had bowls of candy corn no matter what time of the year it was. And it was the most god awful stale <laughs> stuff that had been sitting there since last Halloween, or from whenever I don't know. Uh, and and because you always went and visited her in the summer. Yes, yeah. So I'm got to be <laughs> nine ten months on that candy corn. Uh, you know, whenever she reads the life. Because I don't know if it's available year round. I don't think it is. Uh, or. Anyway, so yeah, so I have a very strong dislike of candy corn, uh, mostly from my childhood trauma <laughs> I went through at Grandma Vera, Vera's uh, home. Because you can't resist it, right? You have to have some. Okay, oh, I can now resist. Uh, yeah, no, uh, that's always been one I've been able to resist. It's just too, like, pure sugar. And wax. Yeah. It's a little like cotton candy to me. I also don't get cotton candy. It's just like... Way too sweet. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel about candy corn. Well, see, if you let it go stale enough, it's not nearly as sweet. (laughs) I don't know that that's an improvement. Pro tip here. (laughs) I think I'm still going to pass. I handed my packet of uh, candy corn to Doris, so... (laughs) Literally pulled it out of the mail slot, saw it, went, do you like candy corn? Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. Never made it back to my desk because I knew I was not going to eat it. Yeah. Well, mine's at my desk. Maybe now that Doris has had a week, I can give her mine. Another one? Yeah. 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 Just about any other candy I, I could live with, but candy corn? No. No, I, no. Mm. No. Well, do you have anything else that you're looking forward to coming up besides Halloween here in a few days? Well, at work, we're having a big chili feed. Oh, yes. Cooking mm-hmm. contests along with our Halloween party at the office. Right. So I will be preparing a batch of chili for that event. A little less spicy than last year yeah. because... So, so I had <laughs> just a little bit of chili powder left over. And I thought, yeah, do I really want this to sit around or, you know, how? Oh, it was spicy. Yeah. 
Although a handful of people in the office really liked it. It was sort of a polarizing one where some people liked the flavor, but it was too spicy for them. Mm -hmm. And then other people, it was like perfect amount of spice. They wanted that. And none of the others had that level of heat. Right. And, but the, the, the thing is, we're supposed to label, is it mild, medium, or... And I had put medium on, on mine. Uh, it, whoa, we went well past medium on the uh, spice level. Yeah. I feel like medium was valid. I just think we have kind of wimpy people at the office. <laughs> on the spice tolerance part. So I'm going to go back to my original recipe and not... Even, not do the... Yeah, even if I have a little bit left over, I'm, I'm just going to stick with the appropriate price uh, amount of seasoning and, mm -hmm. and uh, see how that performs this year in yes. the contest. So we've had a couple of agents come up and ask specifically, are you making your chili again because they want your chili? Yes, which, yes, I, I answered I will be. <laughs> yes. I don't know if we signed up yet, but... I did. I, okay. I, I emailed Doris and said, hey, sign me up. Okay. Yeah. That's good. She sent out a little reminder, and I thought, ooh, I think we better get on that. Probably smart. Yeah. So I have that. Uh, we have our sports. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to the cooler weather. Yes. I have some outdoor projects I want to work on. Yeah, when was the last time you pruned your roses and whatnot? Um, well, now's a good time to prune them because we're heading into a uh, good rose season. So it's been probably a year. A little while, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I probably pruned them in February, but yeah. yeah. Time to do it again. Yes. Get some fertilizer on the fruit trees. I just did that. Oh, it, yeah. Okay. One of the cool mornings I went out there and fertilized the, the citrus trees. Okay. I mean, I think pretty much the same, but I also grabbed a couple of things going on in Tucson this weekend. Okay. Um, so kind of funny, both... November 1st through the 3rd, we have two very different events going on in town. Um, and so one is basically Day of the Dead celebrations, um, including the All Souls procession. Um, and that's at the MSA Annex, so kind of west of downtown. Um, this is where you see a lot of people put on the face paint that makes it look like their mm -hmm. face is a skull and whatnot. And yep. It's a celebration of when those that have passed are able to come back into our world. Yes, it's the closest. Yes, and so people will put out their favorite foods and mm -hmm. drinks and whatnot, and it's a celebration of those that have, have gone and their chance to, to revisit the living mm -hmm. here in our world. That's the... Yeah, the least celebration. barrier between right. worlds, the basically. Worlds. Yep. Yes. And then what's the other event? <laughs> and then the other event, kind of on a different uh, side of things, is the Tucson Celtic Festival and Scottish Highland Games. Um, I've not been to the All Souls procession. It's on my list to go. I have been to the Celtic Festival before. Very different. It is entertaining, though. Mm -hmm. And that's at a Rito Park, so... So if you're in town, uh, the weather's going to be great, and those will be a couple of different things for you to go see. Yep. So yeah, one of these days we will have to make it to the procession. Well, I think that's all I've got. Is this the part where you do your... Oh, yes. Here. <laughs> uh, here are all the different uh, uh, services that you can listen to us if uh, in a podcast form. Mm -hmm. Also, like and subscribe. Still, get us to 100. <laughs> get us to 100. We're at 99. Uh, and we're still working on a proper outro. And, and while I made a big fun about that last time, uh, we didn't do anything about it. Yeah, we did absolutely nothing about that. So I think this is where you do a close and I just nod and say. <laughs> well, until next week. Have a good week. Have a great week. See you then.